10K races are hard. Whether you're a complete beginner or an experienced runner looking for a new PB, 10K is a tough distance. I'm gonna run you through the best nutrition principles for a 10K race so that you can feel confident that regardless of everything else, you've nailed this aspect of it. So then you can blame something else for not hitting the time that you wanted, like not having the latest pair of carbon shoes or the weather or how busy it was. Just kidding, mostly. So if you're new here, then hey, my name is James and I'm a registered sports nutritionist. I work with amateur and professional endurance athletes and help them to train and race better, improve their recovery and do all of this while staying happy and healthy. Nutrition can absolutely make or break a 10K. So I'm gonna run you through the three best nutrition principles for it. And I'm also gonna run through one thing which you don't need to do and I think it's gonna surprise you. So imagine you're setting off for a long road trip. You wouldn't want to put the wrong type of fuel into your car because if you do, it's probably not gonna work that well. It's gonna feel clunky or the worst case scenario, it's gonna break down. Your body is similar when it comes to running a 10K. You need to put the right fuel in for it to run efficiently and reduce the risk of problems whilst you're doing it. Now, there are three main problems when it comes to breakfast before a 10K, and this is something which runners typically struggle with. There's not eating anything, eating too much, and eating the wrong type of foods. To put it simply, you need to eat before a 10K if you want to run it well. It's a demanding distance, which means that carbohydrates are a must. However, because it's hard, you don't want to eat too much because that will just increase the risk of gastrointestinal symptoms, so things like bloating or stitches. You can imagine your breakfast as a top-up of your energy stores and not as the thing that's actually gonna power you through the whole race. For your breakfast, you want to avoid the heavy meals, and that's things which are typically high in fat, fiber, and protein. All of these are harder and take longer to digest, which means come the start of your 10K, it's more likely that they're still gonna be sitting and bouncing around in your gut, which will then contribute to an increased risk of tummy problems. Now, there is no perfect breakfast, except the breakfast that is perfect for you, because it's gotta be one that you tolerate and you enjoy eating. So you don't need to eat a breakfast just because someone else does, if it doesn't work for you. All of these are great examples of a breakfast before a 10K, and you could modify these or do something completely different. If you've got any breakfast examples you wanna run past me, then put them in the comments and I'll let you know what I think. My suggestion is to have your breakfast at least two hours before your 10K, up to about four hours before a 10K if you have a sensitive stomach. You need to make sure that you practice it well in advance of your race to make sure that you do tolerate it okay. So what I mean there is practice it in the same sort of scenario as you might be running your 10K in. So getting up at the same time of day, leaving the same amount of gap between your run and your breakfast and seeing how well you do. If you can eat it and then not have any problems when you go for a run, then that's probably a good one for you. I usually suggest having 500 milliliters of water with 250 milligrams of sodium with your breakfast, as this will optimize your hydration before your 10K. You could use a sports specific electrolyte tablet for this and it should say on the packet instructions how much salt or sodium it contains. Now, sodium and salt are slightly different things in that salt is made up of sodium chloride. So 60% chloride and 40% sodium, which means, for example, if it's a one gram of salt, that would be 0.4, 400 milligrams of sodium. There's a really nice story which sums up the approach that you should take to running and pacing a 10K. You might be familiar with the story of the tortoise and the hare, where the hare starts full of energy and enthusiasm and runs away from the tortoise. It eventually gets beaten by the tortoise though, and this is the way to run your 10k. I mean preferably quicker than a tortoise, although on writing the script for this video, I realise I have no idea how fast a tortoise can run, so maybe not. Anyway, the point I'm trying to make here is that you want to start slow and if possible, increase your pace throughout the race. This is called negative splitting and there are two big advantages to this. Firstly, it feels bloody amazing to get faster over the race and finish strong. Meanwhile, your mate John looks absolutely awful because he's gone out too hard and now he's gonna puke. 
Secondly, there is a genuine physiological benefit to this. When you go harder than you can sustain, you produce lactate. Now, lactate in itself isn't bad, but the byproduct of that system is the creation of hydrogen ions or protons. And these are what make your muscles feel heavy and make you slow down. By building into the race, you should reduce the likelihood of this happening and instead finish feeling strong and like you've given it everything. Practice this in training and you'll see what I mean. You should be able to feel that gradual buildup of intensity rather than when you run and you go out too hard and you suddenly realize that it's way too difficult because unfortunately when it comes to a 10k, that's not gonna get better unless you stop. Before we move on to the next tip, if you want to know how to recover properly after a 10K, then you can check out my free recovery guide. It gives you an easy to follow framework that will help you to boost your recovery. And you can find a link to that in the description and the comment section of this video. I have a client who I started working with not long before they ran their fastest 10K. We talked through nutrition strategies for their race and I suggested something which seemed counterintuitive to them. They were previously used to taking nutrition on during their 10k, having previously used gels to help give them an energy boost during the race. However, my advice to them was to not take anything during the 10k, and actually this is what I would advise for most people. A lot of people line up with pockets full of sweets or slurp on gels, but for most people, this really isn't necessary. A 10K is relatively short in terms of duration, and anything that you consume during it isn't really gonna have much effect by the end. The caveat here is that if you think it's going to take longer than 90 minutes, then you probably would benefit from having nutrition during it. But realistically, anything under that time is just another thing to worry about. And when you're already working as hard as you can, this is just gonna increase the risk of gastrointestinal upset. And this is what I told the client that I'm working with. We talked about the lack of need for nutrition during a 10K run, and they ran it safe in the knowledge that they didn't need to consume any gels, and they ran it superbly. The same thing here goes for water. As long as you're going into it in a well hydrated state, you shouldn't actually need water to complete it, and it shouldn't really negatively impact your performance if you don't consume anything. All you need to do is drink to thirst if you want to or rinse your mouth out, but anything more than that isn't necessary. Now there's one final area that I love to talk about when it comes to nutrition for a 10K, and it's one that can surprise people. Most runners think that they need to do this one thing to improve their performance, but in reality, they don't. If you imagine that you're trying to heat a little room, then you only need a small steady fire that starts from a small collection of wood. But if you're trying to build a bonfire, then you need a lot more fuel for it, and you need to take a structured approach. When you're running a 10K, you don't need to carb load, unlike for something like a half marathon or longer. Now, it won't strictly do any harm, but you're not gonna get any benefits unless, again, you're expecting it to take longer than about 90 minutes. The aim of carb loading is to maximize glycogen stores, and that is incredibly useful for endurance events. In a 10K race, however, it's unlikely that you're going to run out of these stores because it's just too short a distance to do that if you go into it in a well-fueled state. My suggestion is to have a good amount of carbs with every main meal the day before and have something like 1.5 times the amount of carbohydrates that you normally would. It is still worth following the core principles of carb loading and race prep though which means transitioning to a lower fiber diet in the two or three days before your race and also minimizing fat and protein foods the day before. This will help to reduce the risk of gastrointestinal discomfort or upset during your 10K, leaving you to run it as well as possible. Now, improving your nutrition around a 10K is just one part of the puzzle. If you really want to up your game, then you should focus on your daily diet because this will help you to train and recover better too and I help you to do that in this video here.